All right, cool. So let, let's go a little further with uh, Thomas. Hi, Thomas. Hi, how are you doing? Okay. Hi, cool. Uh, yeah, Thomas will show us like uh, uh, integration with uh, Xero. It's a uh, accounting software for UK, right? Yeah, um, I think it's actually born out of New Zealand. Um, if memory says right. Uh, right, right. All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah. I'll, okay. All right. I'll just jump in and share my screen. Cool. Yeah. Cool. cool. So. Hopefully, um, everyone now can see um, a scenario that got set up. Very clear. Beautiful. So, because of what we're going to do in this one, uh, I'm not going to go through and create every part, um, but I'm going to give an overview of what we've got set up here, um, what it looks like in Ninox, um, and then lastly, what it also looks like in Xero. Um, so, for anyone who's not heard of Xero before, Xero is an accounting package just like QuickBooks. Um, and what we're doing here for zero um, can be done exactly the same with QuickBooks. Um, just literally imagine each of these modules being a QuickBooks module instead of a zero one. Um, so that's the first point, just kind of want to stress. Um, and what I kind of find useful is to actually start um, at the end uh, and kind of think about where it is, uh, what it is you want to do, sorry, with zero, uh, but to work out what data it is that zero is going to be looking for. Um, so in this scenario, what we're actually doing is we're creating an invoice in Linux um, and then we're going to pass it through to Xero uh, and then we're, gonna, we're actually going to post it as an invoice in Xero. Um, just to quickly jump into Linux. So this is an invoicing table I've got set up uh, in Linux database. Uh, it's got reference numbers up here um, and it's got an amount, uh, invoice date and a due date. Um, and then we're going to pass that into Integromat and then it's going to pass it into zero. And this is zero accounts package here. And this is the invoice that we just looked at. Um, so you can see it brings through the customer name, detail, um, and the price. So now if we jump, jump back into Integromat, um, the reason why I say start at the end is because if we just click on the module, which is creating an invoice, um, when it loads up, one of the things that it asks for is a contact ID. So what this is actually getting at is the actual ID number in zero for that contact, um, because it's looking for the number to be able to assign this invoice to it. So if it doesn't have the actual ID number, then it can't create an invoice. Um, so that's one thing to bear in mind that you're gonna to need to pass to this module in order to get it to work. Um, other than that, it gives you an opportunity to see what other fields you can pass through. So like the invoice reference, um, the date it was invoiced, uh, when it was due, if it's got an invoice number as well. Um, and that's why I'm just gonna move forward to this module here, this search for a contact. So this is what we need to have at the beginning to be able to search our zero, and then it's gonna return an ID number, which you can then go on and use to create an invoice. Um, a little bit up here, or what you'll see here, um, as Arpit showed before, we can use filters. So this strand here is going to create an invoice if the customer exists, whereas this strand here, if the customer doesn't exist, it's going to create a contact, and then it's going to create the invoice. So I'll just show you what these filters look like. So you can see it's a simple condition of does the ID number, which I'm getting from here, it doesn't exist, then we know zero doesn't hold the contact, so we need to create one. So it creates a contact and then it pushes the invoice through. Whereas in this filter, we're looking to see if it does exist, and if it does, well then push the invoice through up here. So that's how I've got my zero integration set up. Um, and then how I'm getting the data out of Ninox um, is basically the, the same as what Julian just showed us. Um, for getting it into the iOS push notification. Um, the <coughs> is that I've just used an Integromat webhook um, rather than using the Ninox module. So I'll just click on it um, and you can see uh, in terms of how it appears and how it works, it's exactly the same. So you get this little address here, which you can copy um, and then you can use that in Ninox database. So what I'll do now is I'll jump across into Ninox and just show you what that looks like. So as uh, Julian did, uh, I've just got a button up here, um, 
And then sat behind this, I've got code basically that's going to grab my invoicing data and then it's going to help us push it through to Integra Map and then ultimately into zero. So if I go into here, you can see I've got my address at the top here, which is my web hook. And then I've got the same code pretty much as to what Julian had in a post request. Um, but the difference is that uh, I'm just capturing all of the data I need for my invoice and then passing it through in this web hook here. Um, so you can see passing my invoice number through, invoice reference, invoice date, the due date, and the net total. And you can see the other information there. Press OK. So what we can do, um, we can then just create an invoice, um, push that button, and then Integral Map will listen out for the new invoice, and then it'll post it into zero. Um, so if I just go back and then let's add a new invoice. Oops. One, three, nineteen, and then we'll say ten. I will say it's for seventy-five pounds. So I've got all the information now that I need in. So I'm just going to go um, back into the Tegra map. So my scenario is already on. Uh, so now if I press this button here, it's giving me the circle to suggest that it's run. And if I go back into zero, and I'm just going to my dashboard. And now I can see we've got two invoices outstanding for this week. And then you can see here it is, my test invoice. I've just sent through 75 pounds. It's come through now in zero. So you can see our webhook here has captured all that data. It's passed it through to the search con the contact. It's found the contact um, and then it's created an invoice for us, um, which has then appeared in, in zero. Um, and so that's just one way um, which you can get the data out. You can do it just as, as Julie showed before with a Ninox webhook at the beginning, um, both, both doing the same thing. So. Uh, like I say, you can do this with QuickBooks as well, um, and it would require the same thing. So you need to search for contact first uh, before you could create an invoice as well. So um, that, that's it. So ho hopefully that has been useful. All right. Uh, I th it's it's so awesome to see how easy it is uh, to, yeah. to 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 make integrations nowadays, and uh, this is actually what we we'd like to show in in our integration week. Or uh, like, um, of course, this is just like one one application. Um, um, there there are many, maybe thousands of uh, applications at Integromat you can uh, you can connect with Ninox. So I think uh, Günther got a question regarding different taxes. Günther? Oh, he's not audible. Uh, I, I don't really get his uh, question. Uh, are, are you audible, Günther? He's not on the panel. Oh, okay. So I will promote you to the panel. Günther? Yeah. All right. My question uh, be, uh, be belongs to the line items, uh, invoices with different taxes within the line items. And in your explanation, I, I, I list it. You send only the, the, uh, the, the total price and not the, the line items. Yes. So uh, it's just, just in this example I created, sorry. So my invoicing table in Ninox, it didn't have a um, like many line items in the actual invoice. I just had one line in it and I was passing it through. Um, but you could, in the same way, if you did have line items in your invoice, in it, then you could pass those values through um, to zero or to QuickBooks um, and you could assign them in, in the line items module and sorry, in the creating invoice module. Okay. 